everyone, it's Ali and welcome to my Christmas card series 2021. Today I'm sharing a grungy, vintage inspired snow globe card and I'm using tons of Tim Holtz and Distress products. Let's get cracking on this Christmas card. The dice set I'm using in this video is the Tim Holtz and Sizzix snow globe number two set, which I think actually came out at least a year ago, but I haven't used this one yet, so. I really wanted to crack it out this Christmas and make sure I got some use out of it. Comes with a lot of little pieces and I'm going to cut all of the dies using some heavy watercolour paper because I'm going to paint all of these with distress inks. There's a lot of little pieces and the smallest ones I left inside the watercolour paper so I didn't lose all the bits. I'm going to start off by doing the main snow globe in this video just because that was the biggest piece. And I'm going to use a mixture of distress oxides and distress inks and I'm going to use ink smooshing technique. Essentially you smoosh your ink pad onto a non-porous surface, add a bit of water and then smoosh and splat your cardstock into the colours and it just gives you like a really nice layered ink effect, really like grungy and vintagey. To make sure you get lots of different layers so all the colours don't sort of merge into one, you do need to dry the cardstock between layers and you can see me doing that here. The best way to do this is to go from light to dark with your colours, so I'm starting with the lightest colours and moving on to the more darker ones towards the end. And I do like actually using a mixture of Distress Oxides and inks together, I think the effect is really nice. The inks are more of a sheer colour whereas the oxides are more chalky finish. So if you haven't used both together I would really encourage you to give it a go, it's really good for getting a grungy vintage look. I'm just going to do the bottom piece of the snow globe now and originally I was going to use multiple colours but I ended up just using this dark red which is called aged mahogany. If you want to know all the colours that I use of Distress Inks and Oxides in this video I'm going to list them all in the description box. There's a lot of different colours that I've used so um, I'm not going to be able to list them all in the voiceover but I will have them all listed in the description box for you in case you're interested in any of them. And I just did three layers of the aged mahogany and then I'm going to use the new Distress Mica sprays that came out this Christmas. I'm going to use the red one um, on top just to give it a little bit of shimmer and shine and I was really surprised with how much came out of the spray bottle. It just kind of went absolutely everywhere which I was not prepared for but that's okay. We're not going to waste it. I'm going to get another piece of watercolour cardstock. I'm going to do the same ink smooshing technique and I'm just going to like soak up all of that spare ink and then I'll use this piece on another project so I can die cut out of it, I can use it as a background, I can use it for a sentiment, there's all different ways I can use it and it means I just don't waste the ink and I'm going to do this multiple times throughout this video if there's any ink left on my glass mat I'm just going to smoosh it with a piece of cardstock and carry on using it. So now I'm going to do all the little houses and I invented this um, cool little way to ink them up because obviously they're really small it's really difficult to pick them up with your fingers and ink them so I stuck them on a piece of purple tape and made like a little loop and then I put my fingers inside the loop and then splattered them in the ink and this worked really really well I actually was able to use the tape for multiple houses and just kept doing the same technique both for the base layer of the little houses and then the layer that goes on top and it just worked really well and I got a really nice variation in colour. All the houses look similar but they all look different because the ink is on them in different places so um, I used a bunch of different colours here, the greys, browns, a little bit more aged mahogany um, and I thought they came out really really nice. Now I'm going to move on to the little windows and these I am just going to add on to another piece of tape um, I've got the windows here and then I've got the trees as well so I'm going to do a layer on the trees with some green inks and oxides um, I'm going to do a few layers of these actually and I love using the tape for this because it means that they don't blow everywhere when I use my heat tool because these are really small I'm actually using a paintbrush to apply the ink for these and then I'm going to use this Nouveau sparkle spray to coat the moons and the windows so all the stars, the moons and the windows of all that really gorgeous sparkly colour and then I'm using the green distress mica spray on all the trees so they've got a bit of sparkle too. Then the last pieces I've got, I've left the smallest pieces till last, I'm not sure if that was the right idea but you know <laughs> that's what I did. So I'm painting the the window frames and the fences again with distress inks and oxides and I'm doing the frames in sort of a darker wood colour like a brown uh, because I thought it would contrast nicely with the houses. And then the last little bits I've got to do are the actual roofs of the houses and also the snow and the clouds. So I'm using a little bit of old paper 
and the really light grey on these and then I'm going to use the new Distress Paste which is like the Snowfall Grip Paste I think it's called just to add snow, essentially like a snow texture on the roofs so this will cover most of the ink underneath but I wanted to add the ink underneath so it wasn't just like stark white so there's a little bit more of a grungy texture because snow isn't always stark white sometimes you know it's a bit dirty <laughs> most of the time in my experience snow is a bit dirty unless it's just fallen so I added all of the snowfall grip paste onto the roofs of the houses and then also I'm going to add it onto the snow at the bottom here. So that's just whatever I had left on my mat, I just kind of stuck it on there. And this dried really, really nicely. It does really look like snow. It dried quite quickly as well. And um, I was really pleased with it when I was finished. So these are all the little pieces, they're all coloured in now, so I just have to assemble them all. I thought I'd got over done all of the fiddly stuff when I was painting them but it turns out actually the fiddliest bit is assembling them all because some of these pieces are so small. I started with attaching the fronts to the houses and then I added the roofs after that and then once all the roofs were attached I could start adding the windows and these windows just kind of pop right in into the houses and that they're actually quite easy to attach as long as you can remember which window goes where because they all are all different sizes and the most fiddly bit is actually the window frames because they're so small that you really have to apply them with tweezers and a tiny tiny little glue bottle i've got this glue bottle with the tiny little spout on it which made it a little bit easier but it was still difficult and very fiddly so um I would recommend this die set if you have a lot of patience. <laughs> so I've got all that done, all of the pieces are assembled now, so I just need to build them onto the snow globe. And I'm going to start at this with the snow at the very bottom. I just glued it on the bottom of the snow because I wanted to tuck some of the buildings behind it. So some of them look like they're behind the hill. I found that the things I'd added the mica spray to, they it was coming off on my fingers. So I actually used some spray fixative that's meant for like pastel and pencil on them. And this just stopped the mica going anywhere. So I don't actually I don't have any of the distressed glaze, but I found that the fixative works really, really well to stop the sparkle and the glitter coming off. So I was really pleased that I found that because um, I'll be using that next time when I use these sprays. It's really handy because otherwise it get really messy. So now I'm just assembling all of the houses onto my snow globe. I've kind of laid them out before so I know where they're going and I did quite closely follow the example on the packaging of this die set. I did change it a little bit just because, you know, because I wanted to. And some of these pieces I am going to add a little bit of foam tape on them so they're raised up slightly. Just the ones at the front I needed a bit of foam tape so they kind of sat nicely so they were not all kind of bent over. So I've sped this up quite a lot because it did take a while to attach all of these. Now all the houses are on, I just need to add my little fences. So I'm adding the fences and then I'm also going to add the trees as well. I was really grateful for my tweezers when I was doing this because um, it just made it so much easier. And the watercolour paper I used for this is actually really good because it's, all the pieces were nice and flat so it didn't really warp even though I'd used like loads and loads of water. And ink on them. I actually used the Artful watercolour paper which is one of from one of the subscription boxes that I've got with them. I really like it. I've been using it loads on my projects recently because it's a really thick, sturdy, heavyweight watercolour paper. So that's all the trees on there now. So I've got all the little pieces. I just need to add the stars and the moon in the sky and also the clouds as well. And then that'll be it for my actual snow globe apart from attaching the base. So this is looking gorgeous now. It's so sparkly and pretty because there wasn't very much space for me to stick this on the bottom. I decided to add a piece of cardstock on the back. So I had some, a little bit more space to put my adhesive and I actually used some foam tape here as well. So I could easily sit the base of the snow globe over the top of the houses. I added some glue as well just to get, make it a little bit stronger because sometimes you can't trust the adhesive on foam tape or foam squares especially because I have so many different ones in my stash and some of them are a bit old so I always like to add a little bit of glue on them. So that's that finished, that's gorgeous. So we just need to make a card base for it now. So again I'm going to use the ink smooshing technique and this time I'm going to do browns because I had this idea in my head that the snow globe was like sat on a table and it had some presents around it so I'm trying to make sort of like a wood effect background and I'm just using like a whole sheet um, I th actually I think this is a half sheet 
that I've got here and I'm using all these different distress inks and oxides and just layering them up again I've started with the lightest color which is brushed corduroy and then I've moved through the two distress inks that I've got here and up to the darkest one which is ground espresso so I recently got a load more brown inks in my distress inks and oxides I didn't think I needed any brown distress oxides well it turns out I was very wrong <laughs> I've used them loads since I've got them they're really really handy um, I actually really really love using some of the more like boring shades in the distress inks and oxides they come in so handy for making things look vintage and distressed and I'm just really into that vibe at the moment so this is all of my layers that I'm going to do on here and then I'm going to cut it out cut it out using this die set from Daisy May Designs it's like a grungy um, octagon I think it's an octagon and I'm going to use this to make my card base so I'm just choosing where I'm going to put it on my watercolor piece and then I've got some tape here that I've just kind of stuck it on my hand to remove some of the tackiness and I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine so I've now got this octagon cut out of the painted cardstock and then I've cut another one to go on the inside just so to cover up sort of the the messy inside so we've got somewhere to write our message and then I'm going to score this on my scoreboard I'm just going to score it in half exactly down the middle of the octagon and then that's going to be our card base so I'm just going to score that gently down the middle you don't want to be too rough with this because you don't want it to crack or to expose any of the cards underneath and then I'm going to score the inside piece as well so I'm going to stick this on again in a minute on the inside just using my we are memory keepers scoreboard there and then I can that fits nicely in the middle there so and the two creases line up in the middle like that so now I'm going to fold this in half that's making my card base and then I'm going to attach the inside of the card so I'm using my ATG gun because I know the adhesive is nice and strong and I'm just going to attach one side to start with so I can make sure it's in the right place and I want to put the fold slightly to the left of the fold underneath because otherwise you're not going to be able to uh, close your card so there we go and then I can there's there's me showing you that there's a little gap between the fold on the inside piece and the outside piece and then I can just fold the top over into the adhesive and then it's stuck down nicely in the middle so that is my that is my card base and that's going to be really sturdy because we've got two layers there of cardstock this actually doesn't fold completely flat because i've used such thick watercolor paper if you wanted it to fold flat you could use thinner cardstock but i wasn't too fussed about this because uh it just means it's stronger and it'll stay up <laughs> i've got another piece of the snow globe from the die set and i'm going to put that on the back of my snow globe that i've made just because it will make it look a little bit neater from the back you don't have to do this if you don't want to but i spent so long on this card i wanted to make sure it looked nice from like every angle <laughs> and then i'm going to glue some more strips of cardstock on the bottom um underneath this back panel just to raise the back to the same height so I can easily put a load of adhesive on it and attach it to my card base because I'm not going to attach it um, all the way down so it's just going to be nice and sturdy on the back and again I'm going to use a little bit of glue just to make sure that it sticks and then I'm going to pop this onto my card base so it's sitting above the card base like this so it's going to stand up so I'm going to use this little Tim Holtz ephemera pack I think this is from last year this is like the Christmas snippets pack and this is what I'm going to use for my sentiment. So I've not really got a traditional sentiment on this card just because I wanted to keep it sort of, I don't know. This was, um, I was so pleased with this card. I didn't want to kind of, uh, it's almost like a Christmas decoration to me. So I wanted to keep going with that theme. So I just picked some of these ephemera pieces and it does, I mean, it does have a sentiment because it says um, special delivery parcel post so I, you know, I thought that was quite cute so I'm just attaching these and I'm using a bit of foam tape to make sure everything is all sitting nicely and not all wobbly and everything's at the right height and lots of glue as well and that is the finished card for today I'm really pleased with it I love the variance in colour I love the grungy texture to it the texture paste looks amazing i really like that yeah i think i don't think i'm able to give this one away i think this one's gonna have to be a christmas decoration that stays in my house <laughs> so i really hope you enjoyed the video please check out my channel for more card making tutorials and subscribe so you don't miss future videos in my christmas card series 2021 i hope to see you back here on my channel again soon bye